Podcast. My name is Todd Clark. I'm the history programmer for the Stark County Park District. One of my favorite sites is right here in uh, the border of Lu the city of Louisville and Michelin Township, and that's the old Molly Stark Sanatorium, which you see behind me. This building was built in 1929. Uh, the architect who designed the building, his name was Albert Thayer, and he was from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. And this building was built in what's known as the Spanish Revival style. Tuberculosis was one of the most feared diseases of the 20th century. If you go back to England in about 1825, one in four people died from tuberculosis. A hundred years later in Europe, the numbers weren't much better. It was still one in six people who died from tuberculosis. And over the course of the 20th century, nearly 100 million people died from tuberculosis. Originally, it was planned to build 88 um, tuberculosis sanatoriums in Ohio, one for every county. That never actually took place. There were only about 50 of these built. This is quite a massive building, and yet it was only built to house 128 patients when first built. Early on, the treatment for tuberculosis, one of the best cures they thought would be the use of plenty of fresh air and plenty of sunlight. And so the building was designed to be able to provide both of those. You can see the sheer number of windows, the large amount of glass that is here on this building. Each one of those windows was designed to open up and admit fresh air into each of the different patients' rooms and also to admit plenty of sunlight. On the upper floors, there are balconies and terrace. Those are where the worst case patients were housed. Those patients who couldn't even get out of bed, who were bedridden 24 hours out of the day. Those upper floors were designed so their beds and gurneys could be wheeled out onto patios and balconies so that they could get fresh air and sunlight. All throughout the year, whether it was summer, spring, or winter, the windows and doors would be thrown open here, again, admitting that as much fresh air and sunlight as possible to help in the treatment of tuberculosis. handle on how to treat the disease, all this space wasn't required anymore for the treatment of tuberculosis patients. So in about 1956, this goes from being Molly Stark Sanatorium, as it was originally named, to becoming Molly Stark Hospital. And they begin admitting patients from other area hospitals as well for ailments that are not solely tuberculosis. You start to see physical therapy taking place here. You start to see some adult daycare and MRDD programming. There's some drug and alcohol treatment that takes place here, and very limited psychiatric services that took place on site. The hospital operated all the way up until 1995, when the doors were finally closed and the building shuttered. It's been abandoned ever since. Uh, as of today, that's 18 years that this building has been abandoned here out on the border of Louisville and New Michelin Township. Those years have not been kind to the building. Um, over the years, there have been several vandals who have broken into the building. A lot of the glass windows, especially on the lower floors, have been broken out and boarded up. Um, there have been vandals who have broken inside. After 1995, this was used for storage of records, and some of those vandals set fire to those records, which burnt holes all the way up through the ceilings here at Molly Stark. That allows water into the building every time it rains and every time it snows. And all that water getting inside the building and all that moisture has started to degrade the interior of the building. Some of the wooden beams and trusses that support the frame of the building, they've been compromised. There are some parts of this building that are literally in danger of falling in on themselves because of that environmental damage. The future of Molly Stark is uncertain. There has been talk about saving at least parts of the building to use as a community center, perhaps as a parks building and space for the local historical societies to meet and hold events. Uh, there is a possibility that all the buildings will have to be raised at the site. This would be very unfortunate because it is a very rare style of architecture. There's not much of it preserved in this area. And if you've had a chance to be out to the site, you can see that there are a lot of beautiful architectural elements and embellishments that definitely should be preserved if the buildings are going to come down.